Welcome to an SFB Addict video. SFB Addict here, we're going to update our video, the Vassal SFB Cat Module Part 3 of 4. This is basically a quick walkthrough of the features of the SFB Cadet Module for the Vassal game engine. We are currently on version 2.65, and it is May 2018. So uh, we're going to open up the module here. And at this point in the module, you could uh, start a new game load uh, a save game or load a tutorial. The tutorial is basically scenario one and it walks you through the entire scenario by simply clicking the next button and does the entire scenario. But we're going to start a new game offline here. And at this point this is uh, where we can either load a scenario or start a new game and we're going to start a new game and then we get to select a map board. There's all sorts of boards here. And we're just going to select the a small one, 18 wide by 11 high. We don't need much map space. And then after you choose your map, you can choose a species, but you don't have to, so we are just going to come in as uh, an observer. Now there are preferences to the module, which you can find under File and Preferences, and you can set a bunch of different settings, and the setting that will be different between what you will load up and what I'm currently showing you is the Use Combined Application window will not be checkmarked. On mine, it will be on yours and this allows me to have everything open up as a separate window. I have a dual monitor setup, so what I normally do is I put the map on one monitor, and then I take the control window chat area, and I put that on a separate monitor with the SSDs. And in here you can also change other things, like uh, the default sound that gets played for a wake-up call. You can uh, change your uh, font, the colors for chat, and a few other things. And for now, my map, I'm going to keep it underneath the uh, top area where the chat and the uh, buttons are. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically go through the, the various buttons and the features of the client. We're not going to learn how to play the game, we're just going to show what the, uh, the features are. So under File here, this is where you could load up your scenarios, or you could load a game, or uh, begin a log file. A log file basically records all of the keystrokes that you enter, and you can play that game back later by simply loading it up and then clicking the next button to replay everything. It even replays this, the exact same dials. And the first button that we have in the window is the undo button. The next is the next button. And then we have the server controls. And this is normally where you would see the um, game rooms that are created listed and who is in those game rooms. And the other menu items up here are things like the refresh counters. If you run this while you have a scenario loaded, it will reload all the current counters that are on the map with the newest versions. Some of the scenarios were saved in an older version. They may not have all the features that the newest counters would be. So if you're not setting up a scenario with brand new counters and you use the saved ones, you can use the refresh counters to make all the counters on the map new counters. And then under the help menu, you get the plenty of items here. I mean, Facebook group for the cadet module is one to pay particular attention to. And then you've got other things here like the version history. And it lists all of the changes that were made to the client all the way back to version 1. Okay, the first button we have is rules. And in it we will have uh, rules under uh, rules and scenarios. And it basically shows you all of the scenarios that are in the cadet booklet. And it starts with Scenario 1 rules, or I should say Scenario 1 starts with introducing you to the rules you need for Scenario 1, and then after you uh, read that and learn those rules, you can then read the setup for the scenario and then play at that scenario, and then you repeat the same thing again with Scenario 2, you learn some new rules, you then read the setup, you play the setup, etc, etc, and that continues on for all the scenarios up to uh, Scenario 12, 13. Now the first page of the Rules Index lists the scenarios and what rules are learned in each scenario. And then down below, at the very bottom, we have things that normal players or, or players of the full game need to remember are not included in Cadet when they are playing against a Cadet player. It's actually a little bit uh, mentally harder on players that know the game than it is for people that are learning the game, because there's so many things we need to remember that we cannot do. Now the other thing under the Rules button is Rules by Rule Number. It's the exact same rules that you have in Rules and Scenario. It's just presented in a different format. It's just just the rules, no scenarios, in numerical order. So it's essentially similar to a rulebook, or the basic and advanced rulebook for the full game, the same type of format. Okay, 
the next button after that is the robot rules. And you'll need these rules if you plan on playing some of the scenarios beyond scenario 4 without an opponent. And then after that we have uh, the index and abbreviation. And it's basically a, a quick breakdown of where you can find things in the rulebook by rule number order. And then the abbreviations are basically the abbreviations that you'll see a lot on the, uh, the SSDs, uh, Starship displays, or uh, in the rulebook. And the next button that we have is the green players button. This is where you can join a particular side or species. Now when you are first learning the, uh, the game and the client, the uh, first few scenarios are set up with multi-access counters, which means you do not need to be a particular species or side. Anyone, including an observer, can manipulate uh, the counters. But uh, later on you'll want to become a species side because that restricts access to the counters to you only. And if you are trying to do some sort of a team game, you can put uh, separate energy allocation forms in different SSD windows by becoming two different species. The, the window itself doesn't restrict you to a specific set of racial SSDs. It does restrict you to specific counters. So you can just simply use the counters for that species for, to represent your ships, or you can use the multi-access ones. And then of course we have the SSD radio windows, and this is where you load up the actual Starship data sheets. And then you can get them here under the counters and SSD button. And then once you've got them, you can drag them into your SSD area window. And once they're in here, only the person that is that player, that species, has access to it. And only they can click it to damage it, or right-click on it and uh, fill out the energy allocation form and that sort of thing. And it will retain the information that you have put into it, even if you close it. So if you apply some damage, close the window, then reopen it, it'll still be there. And then in here we have the energy allocation form. This is where you will write up what you're doing for your turn, and when you're done you can hit Control a which will copy all of it, and then you hit Control c and then you can paste that uh, anywhere really, put it into an email, send it, or you can put it in here in the, the notes, or the SOP orders, the notes, the delayed tab, type it in as turn 1 EA, and then paste it into the text, click OK and save it, and that way if later on you need to reveal that turn's energy allocation, you can do so. Now I'm not going to click save on this, I'm just going to click cancel out. And then the next button that we have is the actual counters, and this is where you get your playing pieces. And the first few in here that you'll notice are multi-access. These are the ones that everybody can access. And then down below that you have the counters that are restricted to specific species or races. Now you have a couple other tabs here, the generic pieces and terrain. They're pretty self-evident when you go into them. It's where you get things like asteroids and planets. But here under the uh, ships for all races, the multi-access ones, you can just hit Alt N and it can change the image that is being displayed for that counter and it's got a, a fair variety here. Now these are really only needed for the most part when you're playing Scenario 1, 2, and 3 after that. You'll be choosing a specific side. And you get the same thing here for, for drone shuttles and other things. And then below that you have a text SSD. And the text SSD is when you uh, want to use full-scale SFB ships instead of the cadet ships. And here you can see it's got the uh, shields all around the ship. And then here on the menu, you can go down and select the Starship display and pulls up a text window. And you can actually edit this information down to be what is on your paper copy SSD. So this is basically for people who have the full game and have other SSDs that they want to use. This is where they would input that information. Now there's a few other things on the actual counter. You've got uh, electronic warfare stuff, um, fire control status, passive fire control, and erratic maneuvering lines, and you can just go into the EW status and click on them to turn them off when you don't need them. And then you also have your uh, EW status, which on this particular counter are always present. And you can just go back into e change ECM status and type in what the new the new number is. Now, of course it helps if my uh, number pad on my uh, my num lock on my number pad is turned on so I can actually type a number. And of course this counter moves on the map. Now in order for your opponent to actually access the uh, text SSD, it needs to be on the map, not in the SSD area window. But your energy allocation form, that you want in the SSD area, not on the map kind of thing. So that only you can access it. Because you'll notice that on the text SSD counter there is no energy allocation form op option like there is on the cadet SSDs. Um, so in that you can open it up, fill in what your energy allocation number is, and you can keep this in your SSD area window. And then of course you have the, uh, the species-specific 
counters where you've got things like your shuttles, drones, T-bombs, fighters, things like a drone card, shuttle card, plasma card, etc. And these can be made invisible and masked. So when it's masked, nobody can see it, including you. When it's invisible, nobody can see it at all, but you can see it. And you can actually see through the mask. So if you're, when you're setting the information, you can leave it masked and invisible. You can click on the items, do what you need to do, and then turn off the invisibility, and then you can drag it from your SSD area window into the map area window and just place it on the map somewhere in a visible but masked state. And when it's masked, it's just a solid gray, so you, nobody can see it. And it'll stay that way until you reveal it by right-clicking on it and selecting Mask again, which unmasks it. And then at that point, it reveals the information. As I said, we have other things here for a shovel card, plasma card, mine card. And they basically do the same sort of thing. Now at the bottom here, we have another energy allocation form. This one's different to the previous one I showed you. This one is maskable. So this one you can put on the map, and when you select mask, it'll have a vertical black text that says masked. So when it is masked, only you can access it. When you unmask it, anybody that's in the game room can right click on it and look at it. So this is another way of doing the energy allocation form, such that if you need to reveal it, you can put it on the map and reveal it. And for some people with bad internet connections, which can be exacerbated by other people on your network playing things like Xbox, can cause Vassal to lose synchronization with the other players, and that can cause issues with some things that you had just put in a moment ago suddenly disappearing because you lost connectivity to the server. You can recover that stuff by right-clicking and synchronizing on another player's name that did not lose connectivity issues, but you don't want to be always doing that. So these counters were made in hopes of helping overcome that dropping. So you can put these on the map, and stuff on the map seems to be a little bit better with dropping synchronization. Now we have a fed fire counter here, and there's a properties one and a show data option where you can input the information. The properties one is just basically like a notepad window, you just type stuff in. And you can tell the difference between being masked and unmasked by the pink surround being immediately tightly close to the white or if there's a space. And when the item is masked and the other players see it, they see it just as a little red square until you unmask it, in which case it then looks like a white square. And when it's visible to everybody, they can all open it and look at the contents of the counter. So if I switch back and forth here between being Federation and just being an observer, you can see the difference between being masked and unmasked, and the difference between the pink, the pink outline of the counter being really close to the white and being separated from the white by a distance. So when it's separated by a distance, that's when it's masked. When it's tight to the white, it's unmasked and everybody can see the counter. So when you fill these out, all your opponent knows is there's a red square on the map. Until you unmask it. And of course, this uh, text SSD counter has multiple images on it, and you can just rotate through them to uh, select the image that you want by hitting Alt N or right-clicking on the menu and selecting the next image. And uh, if we drag on the species-specific counter onto the map, you can change the graphics on those as well by selecting Alt N. And these ones are restricted to the specific species. So the one we have here is Federation. So the only ships you'll see here are Federation ships. Now the original blue counter that you see is designed to be easily seen when you reduce the map down to a, ro a low resolution so that you can get much more of the map on screen at once, but you can still make out what the counters are and you can still move the counters. I'll just grab another species counter here and I'll switch over to uh, an LDR green counter. So you can see the difference even when it's a small map between a blue fed and the green LDR quite easily when you've got the map reduced to, excuse me, cups, reduced a small size. That's what those ones were originally created for. But of course the other counters are uh, much prettier to look at, but you need to be a little bit better zoomed in to see them. Now there are more than just cadet SSDs in the module. There are full-scale SSDs for the Federation Heavy Cruiser, the Klingon D6, D7 Cruiser, and the Orion Heavy Cruiser, the Pirate Orion. Uh, these were the only ships that we were allowed to put into the module. That was due to restrictions imposed by ADB. Now, when I click here on the number one shield to damage it, you can see that if I'm clicking in the bottom right-hand corner of the number one shield, it's still just doing the same boxes across the top in order. That's because the number one shield is actually 31 various graphics, and it just rotates through those graphics in order, no matter where you click. I did try making um, every box on the SSD a separate box, 
Um, but it slowed things down too too badly that it just didn't work out. So I've had to group systems like the shields and the laboratory and the forward hall and things like that as one group instead of individual boxes. Now the weapons are individual, so you can click on them to damage them individually, but the other systems, it just rotates through a series of images. Now for the big systems like the forward hall or the laboratory, you can click the label and it undoes damage, but things like the APR, you do, there, there's not very many of them, so you'll just have to click through until you get back to the original uh, damage level that you meant to be at, if you accidentally click on the SSDs. And that is an, another thing, when you click on the SSD, even if it's a right click, if it's on a clickable box, it will apply the damage to it, so be careful when you click. Always try and click somewhere where it's, there's nothing to click on, like uh, below all the boxes here, below the probes to the left of the DamCon and XDAM, and you can right click there and get your menus. Now when I did try and do all the boxes individually, for instance the, the number one shield is 30 separate boxes. If I were to apply maybe 10 damage rapidly quite quickly in a row, it would take maybe two to three minutes for it to actually catch up and finish applying the damage. And that's the other reason for going to doing it as a, a series of rotating graphics for each uh, set of systems like that. It, it ended up being much more responsive. So, as you can see, it is possible to do full-scale SSDs, it's just that we're not allowed to have them in the client. If you want to use SSDs other than the cadet chips and those uh, specifically mentioned ones, you need to use a text SSD. And of course, a text SSD, you can change the image, you can right-click on it, pull out the SSD thing, fill out the other systems, but there is actually another way of doing quasi-text, quasi-graphical um, SSDs, and that's here under the drag-and-drop menu, and it's the section here that says SSD parts, and it's exactly that. It's all the parts that we'd use to build an SSD. Now this isn't doing anything that a paint program can do, it's just it's clickable boxes. So you can go in here and you can pull things up like a shuttle, and it's predefined, you can just click on it and apply the six damage to it and click below and undo the damage. And then we have other things in here like a fighter for the Hydrin, and a fighter for the Zinti. Now the Zinti one actually has two drones on it. Um, you gotta be careful where you click, because you can accidentally click on a, a point where it'll both launch the, the, the drone and apply damage, so be careful. Click on the wings when you want to launch a drone, and all it does is it just removes the image of one drone and then removes the image of the other drone. If you click again, it puts both of them back. And then if you want to apply damage to these six boxes in the center, make sure you're clicking in that area. If you click down below those six boxes, it undoes damage. And at the very top, you've got a little box here that you can click on that'll turn red. You can use that to represent your Phaser 3 kind of thing. And again, if you click down below in the tail, that, does, that undoes damage. And then we have other things in the menu as well. For instance, there's boxes, and the, uh, the boxes here uh, can be groups of like, for instance, 30 horizontal, 30 vertical kind of thing. So you can go in and you can, uh, you can select and use them to, to build your shields, for instance. Now the problem with these ones is that there is no undo ability. So if you meant to apply four damage and you accidentally click five damage, you have to actually click all the way back through the entire sequence of 31 images to get back to the amount of damage you want to do. And then there's these other boxes that have got numbers and labels in them. And it's Control, or sorry, it's Alt N to uh, change the numbers, and it's uh, Alt P to change the letters. And they're clickable, so you can apply damage, and you can build out an SSD. So, for instance, if we wanted to do a Federation heavy cruiser with four photons, we can put in four boxes and label them in as A, B, C, and D. And then we can uh, Control C the box to copy it and grab a new one, and or we can go back over to the SSD parts window and drag them out, and you can do other ones and put them in as phasers, so we can number them like Phaser One, Phaser Two, and they are clickable for damage. And then after you uh, set in the boxes that you want, well, you're going to want to label them. Well, there are labels here, so you can just drag them out, put them above the, the weapons that you've put there, and then right-click and change the label and put in what the system name is. So we can put in, like, Photon FA, Phaser 1's forward half, Phaser 1's left side, Phaser 1's right side, Phaser 3's, 360's, etc. You can label all the boxes that way. And it looks very similar to an actual SSD that was drawn out, but of course these are built by you. So you can make up something that's not official. If you want. This is how you can build your, your SSDs. Now there is no way to save these in a, in a library. You can, you can make a, a game and save your game and it'll be there when you load that game up. But if you overwrite that save, it's gone. <laughs> um, you, you, you pretty much have to undo all the damage kind of thing. Um, so if you save a game, you load it up, you play it, and ten turns later you click save and it's all damage kind of thing, well you'll just have to uh, make a new one or undo the damage. So when you make a save game, try and keep copy of the save game kind of thing. Um, it is, of course, restricted to you with your, your login. So if you become Federation, you create a Federation ship, it'll be locked to your login as long as 
you are Federation. But you can, of course, click on players and become Observer again, and then save it. And then you could send that file to your opponent, and then you can both load that save game up kind of thing. Well, actually, one of you will have to load it up, and the other one of you will have to synchronize to the person that loads it. Now, these shields that I've put in here, um, I kind of try to make them a little bit uh, more visually uh, readable. So if I click through from uh, 4 damage to 5 damage, it'll have 5 on the side, or it'll do 6, or it'll do 2 groups of 4 for 8 kind of thing. And then when you get to 10, it's one entire row of 10 kind of thing. So if you don't want to use those types of boxes that uh, you have to click all the way through, there is another item here in the SSD parts called shields, and it's a counter for the ship with the shields all around, and you can put these anywhere you, you want, above the SSD or building below it, to the right of it, to the side of it, whatever. But you can uh, change the image, and you can just click on the black areas and type in the number that the shields are supposed to be. Now these aren't meant to be used on the map, but if you wanted to, you could use them on the map. They don't look pretty though. Uh, the text SSD counter that I showed you earlier, uh, that would be a more appropriate counter to use on the map. But if you really wanted to, you could put these on the map. Now of course, some people find just looking at the group of boxes a little bit uh, jarring, so they, they need some sort of a, an outline to it. So I did create some outlines, and they're here down under outlines, and they're grouped by species. And then you can drag them in here and once you do that, you can maneuver things around. Now, you can't just click and drag and select a bunch of stuff when you try and do that. And more often than not, grab the outline and move the outline. And if you don't mean to do that, you can click the undo button and put it back. But if you start selecting outside of that outline and you're not clicking on it, and you drag your box into it, sometimes you can select a group of items and move them as, as a group. But uh, it's kind of hard and tedious to do that once you've actually got a bunch of things filled in. But as I was saying, you can create a ship using just the boxes just to represent the weapons, and then the shield item over there to represent your shield. And of course there are other outlines here that you can use for other ships, but if, you're, if you and your opponent both have a paper copy of the SSD, the only things your opponent's really going to be interested in most of the time is what weapons are damaged. So you can often just set up an outline with just the weapons, and you can play your game that way with a paper copy of the SSD that both you and your opponent will fill in for the other systems. For the most part, like I said, it's just the weapons that people care about. Now in the uh, drag and drop. There are other items here. For instance, you have uh, weapons charts that you can also drag into your SSD area window. And if I uh, zoom the SSD area window down, I'll just plop in a bunch of them here that would uh, be used for Federation, like Phaser 1s, Phaser 3s, um, Photon chart. And you also put in a few charts of your weapons, so if you're uh, fighting against a plasma player or a drone user, you can put a drone table in, you can put a plasma table in. Now under weapons there is a tab here that's a catch-all for charts, so there's a bunch of other things under charts that aren't just weapons. But anyway. Oh, and if you have some drones or something like that on your, your, your ship, or your opponent, whatever, there's some drone racks in the SSD parts that you can drag into your uh, SSD area window to help you keep track of your weapons. And if you right-click on it, you can actually change the label from reading A1 to like A2, A3, etc to represent A racks, and there's uh, another one there for B racks that you can put in, or you can change the A to a C to represent C racks kind of thing. And as you launch your drones, you can just click on the boxes and uh, mark them as launched kind of thing. And there are other types of labels in there. So you've got uh, a line SSD short label, and you've got a long label. So you can put things in here like ADD rounds, and then the number of rounds. And you'll notice here that the, uh, the white text area will overlap the black area, but it's the black area that's clickable to simply type in numbers, where if you want to change the label part, you have to right-click and select Change Label. So as you fire your ADDs, you can just click on the black area and type in new numbers, and of course it looks a little bit better if you use a shorter title. That way it's not overlapping the black area. So it can be anything like other systems, damage control, sensor, scanner, excess damage, that sort of thing. Anything where you're, you're going to want to put a label then a bunch of numbers kind of thing. You could even use these to use, use around your outline to represent your shields. Basically, it's, it's trying to be flexible.
And of course there is the long version of it, where the uh, the right side black clickable area will be type in a, long, a longer area, and that's clickable. And you've got other things in the uh, drag and drop window, like your damage charts. So there's a large one and a 50% sized one. Once you put them on the map, you can zoom in and zoom out, and it will affect the size of them. And you got a cadet damage chart here as well. And you got a couple of other charts like your damage priority rule and your non-violent and your uh, terrain induced damage kind of thing. And of course these charts are clickable so the underlying systems can be clicked on and then they uh, echo in the chat and they highlight. So again if you're familiar with the damage allocation chart the underlying systems can hit once and then you click them. The non-underlying systems, you keep hitting them until they're completely gone, and then once they're all completely gone, you click on them, and it will fill in all of them that are elsewhere on the chart as well, to indicate that those items are gone. And then if you keep getting hit and you lose all your cargo, you click cargo, and car it echoes the chat, cargo's gone, it fills it all in. As you see, the things there. And these fire map diagrams you can actually drag onto the map and you can rotate them to be the same orientation as your ship so you can consult what the, uh, the arcs are if you really need that kind of help. So there's other things here. And on the uh, Weapons uh, charts again under charts. There's a lot of other other items. And again, this is a cadet game, so we go back into the weapons charts and look at, for instance, like the photon table. You'll notice it doesn't have the proximity rolls. It doesn't have the overload roll, rolls. It only has the standard damage. That's because this is the cadet module, and we weren't permitted to put in the overload stuff. And of course, we have the rules list under drag and drop as well. You can uh, drag these charts into your SSD area or into uh, a species SSD area that's not being used in the game. Become that player temporarily, move these charts in there, click on the, the boxes that represent what rules you are using, or uncheck, uncheck the ones you're not using, and then become an observer again and then go back to playing the species you want to play. So that way you can fill out these charts, put them in a SSD area window, they will stay there, and you and your opponent can consult them if you want to remind yourself what rules you are and are not using. And then we have the uh, button to the right of that, the sequence of play and the speed call buttons. Now the sequence of play, it's a dockable item and it will basically just uh, go through the sequence of play uh, each time you click the little plus symbol to the right. And it's an editable list so you can remove steps from it if you want. And then you have the same thing for your impulse call, 16 and 32. Uh, that is also dockable along with the uh, sequence of play. Or you can, you can leave them both as floating windows if you want. But if you dock one, it docks both. Or I should say, if you dock the impulse speed caller, it docks the speed caller and the sequence of play. So of course the idea is to go to the next impulse, then go back through the sequence of play, go through all the steps, then call the next impulse, then come back to the sequence of play and click through them all. Now most players aren't going to do that. Um, it's basically just the people that are learning the game that are going to want to do that. But these, these two tools are there for you to play with. Now, of course, later on, um, people can uh, leave these behind, and there are graphical versions of these these two charts if you want to consult a graphical version of them. And you notice as you click them, it does echo into the chat area. And of course, if we go back to the graphical ones, you can click across the top to mark the speeds, and you can click down the sides for what impulse is being called, and it echoes what's supposed to move into the chat area. And it doesn't just limit it to what's been highlighted for speed, it gives you all speeds that are supposed to move, and it even has some terrain effects at the end for certain impulses. If you're using that terrain, that information is there to remind you. Of course, you can just look at the graphical chart and look at the highlighted columns and just refer to those two specific boxes to call speeds if you want. And of course, uh, you'll notice farther down the chart, it actually gives you brackets of uh, what's uh, to be moved, like 32 to 28 kind of thing on impulse 20. But again, you can always just refer to the highlighted vertical items. Now, you need to fill this entire chart out before you click clear. 
because if you don't, if you just highlight a few impulses and then try and click clear, it will just invert what you have selected. So um, you, you need to make sure that you go through the entire chart and then clear it. So if you only call a few impulses and uh, and try and do a clear, it'll invert everything. So you'll, you'll need to back off the specific ones that you called. If you've only clicked a few and you didn't buy accident kind of thing, don't try and clear to clear all, it'll invert. But there is a couple menus here for speeds and impulses that you can right click on and it will activate the various items on the uh, chart. Now this isn't meant to be used on the map like this, this is meant to be used when you're in a uh, unit list window. So you can bring up a units on map window and it'll list everything that's on the map, including movement chart. So if you zoom out your map and the uh, collar becomes too small to see on the actual map. Inside the units on map window it's still full size and still very readable. And you can, in this window, right click and select speeds and impulses to actually do the highlighting of items. Unfortunately it's not left clickable like it is when it's on the map or if, when it's in an SSD area window, but it's still functional this way if you wish to do it this way. So you could, when the map is reduced really small, put your movement chart way over into the white area to the right of the map, and then use a unit lists window. Or you can use an SSD area window, just drag and drop your movement call chart inside there, and you can zoom your map down small and still have things uh, readable there. And you've got zoom controls on your SSD area window, so you can zoom in and out as you need. And of course there's also graphical uh, sequence of play charts, but typically they don't get used beyond uh, the first three or four uh, scenarios by new players. After that people can uh, just simply refer to the uh, SOP steps button and it has the sequence play steps there listed and when you click on them here it actually plays sound so if you don't have uh, a microphone headset kind of thing to use Skype or Google Hangouts or Discord um, this is a way of getting sound that sounds like you're talking kind of thing and you get buttons across the top for no action thinking and ready and these can also be used to uh, let your opponent know that you've got no actions or if you're thinking. And there's three different buttons for each one, so there's three different sounding voices that'll, that'll play for each one. So if uh, you and your opponent uh, agree, one of you can be the first set of buttons, then the other player can be the second set of buttons. And if there's a third player, the third player can be the third set of buttons kind of thing. And again, when the, the, the SOP steps buttons, when you click them, they, they do play a sound. And then, of course, when you... Uh, are trying to indicate you want to do something, you would call your SOP step, and if it's a simultaneous action that needs to be done, you can go to the SOP orders, go to the delayed tab, click new, and when you type in a name, the, the name needs to be unique. So I suggest always putting in the term and then the impulse, and then whatever stage. You don't actually put the order in the name, you put the order in the text area down below, because the name is visible, what's in the text area is not. And in the text area you write down what you're firing from and what you're firing and what you're firing at. And normally what I would do is I would put in brackets what, what mount a weapon is being fired. And then when you click OK and then save, it will echo into the chat area that you have actually created a, an order. And your opponent is doing the same thing, so you can see when he has completed doing his order. And it'll show in the chat area that the two sides have created an order. So it'll say, player has created a message. So you wait for your opponent to show up and do the same thing. And then you both go back in, and then you highlight the order that you created. And then you click the reveal button, and that'll put a little check mark to the right hand side. And then when you click save, it will then show in chat that that order has been revealed. And your opponent is doing the same thing. And then both of you can go back in, highlight the order, and you can see it. So to, present, to, to save you from doing that extra step of opening that window another time, when you reveal it, you should copy it and then paste it into the chat area so that your opponent doesn't have to reopen the window. It just saves you a step. It's a little bit clunky, but it is a way of doing simultaneous orders. And then you have your dice. So for instance, here we're firing four photons and four phasers. So you can just use the order that things are written in and, and roll eight dice. So here we have three hits with photons, one miss, and then three good rolls for phasers, and one poor roll for a phaser. And then you can consult your weapons charts and pally up the damage yourself. But there is another way of doing it, and you can use these weapon-specific, range-specific uh, menus down below and type in the number of dice that you're rolling. Now these do not reveal what you rolled, it reveals the damage. And so you'll notice it says damage, not roll. So here for a photon, I roll four of them, it's got a 0088. Well, that's two hits and two misses, and it's eight damage for the hits. And again, you'll notice these are standards, not overloads. And then you can do the same thing with phasers. You can put in four phasers, and it'll actually give you the damage. 
So I range 6 to 8. A 0 is obviously a roll of a 6. The 3 is a roll of a 2 or a 3. The 4 is a roll of a 1. And the 1 is a roll of a 5. So again, that's damage, not the die roll. So it's actually giving you damage. That's 16 from the photons and another 8 from the phasers. And then you get two dice for DAC rolls. And of course you can use these not just for DAC, but for weapons like DPDs and Hellbores. So the, the DAC does combine the two dice rolls into one number, so you don't see the two separate rolls, it's what the actual roll combined is. And of course down below you've got more PPD and Hellbore specific range uh, weapons. But again, standard weapons, not overloads. And then after you do your dice roll, you've got a button here for click apply damage, it gives you access to the damage charts. And then after the uh, damage charts, you've got the uh, ready buttons. So you can tell your opponent you're ready to proceed. And of course you've got your unit lists. And you can open up multiple uh, versions of the windows. 25, 50%, 100%, 200%. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a way to put the uh, a variable uh, percentage on these windows. So I give you multiple options, even a text-only option. And then you've got a, a race-only and a units off map uh, menu as well. But only the player gets to see and use those. So if you're Federation, only you get to see the Federation units only window. To other players, it would appear blank. Now you can actually use these windows to uh, maneuver your ship. So you can uh, right click on them and uh, issue orders. But this isn't very useful when you're using the uh, SSD parts to build an SSD because it literally lists all the items one by one. But if you're using a, a full-scale SSD or a cadet SSD, it is useful in that you can actually right-click on and select a menu item to damage items directly from this window. But it's just as easy to pull up your SSD or your window. Now you'll notice that uh, some of these buttons that we've selected are starting to populate down below. Um, this just seems to happen in Vassal. Buttons across the top are actually combination menus uh, that sort of collect the other buttons into one button. But sometimes when you click when you click on some of them, it will put them down below. And if you click on it a second time, sometimes it'll disappear. Other times it won't. It's just a little bug of Vassal. Now, of course, uh, the map itself, the counters can move. You can move your, your counter piece with your mouse. Um, you can move it with uh, keyboard commands and you can right click on them and actually pull up a menu and then select on the menu item. So for instance, uh, if you use the number pad, think of the number 5 key as your ship. You can hit the number 8 to go forward, your number 6 to side slip to the right, number 4 to side slip to the left, uh, 9 to turn right, 7 to turn left, 3 to HET to the right, 2 to HET directly backwards, 1 to HET to the left. So you can just type on your number pad when you have a unit selected and you can move it. And of course you'll notice that uh, it actually leaves behind a slime trail kind of thing and you can toggle that trail on and off and every time you move the ship it will actually put this blue moved label on it and you can click the button CM to clear that. So if you've got like five or six items to move on your side you can use that moved thing to recognize what you have and haven't moved and then when you're done moving click clear moved it only affects you and that will uh, signal to your opponent that you're done movement stage and ready to proceed to the next cities, next set of sequences beyond movement. And then of course there's other things here on the counter you can go in and uh, do electronic warfare status and uh, the ECCM is on the left and the ECM is on the right and you can change those numbers um, but some people don't like having those numbers on the counter so you can leave them on and use them or, or turn them off completely. Of course, you can simply label your ship, the name of your ship, uh, the speed it's going, and then you, if you want, you can put your ECM levels in the actual label of the ship. And of course, that label is visible using the unit lists window, or you can just zoom in on the map and see it. Now, you can actually move your, your unit, as I said, from these unit on map windows. You can highlight the unit, right-click, pull up the menu, and uh, select the command, or you can just simply highlight the unit and use the number pad command to actually move your counter on the map. And of course you've got other items here where you can, for instance, uh, right click and open your SSD window, or you can uh, use an item to uh, send to hex and type in the number, you know, it'll move the counter to the hex you want it to be in kind of thing. So when you're setting up a map that, that comes in handy. And then of course you can right click and clone a counter, and then double click it, select the one that you want, 
and then you can even change the image on that kind of thing. So if you're setting up a fleet action, you just basically need to move one counter onto the map, and then you can clone it and change it as need be. And you can use Alt-N to go to next image, or Alt-B to go to previous image. And of course, you even have a, a movement menu where you can clear your trail, move your ship directly that way. And again, as I said, you can also use your mouse and just simply click and drag it. Now, if you and your opponent move and you want to undo your move, it will undo the immediately previous thing that was done. So if you moved and your opponent moved, you click undo, it'll undo your opponent's move. And if you click it again, then it will undo your move. So you have to be really careful with the undo button. More often than not, it's just easier just to simply click on your ship, drag it back to where it's supposed to be, and use the Control l or Control r to rotate the ship to the orientation it's supposed to be in, and just do the movement over again, rather than use the Undo button. And in the Server Control menu, if you see people's names in there, if you need to synchronize, you right-click on that person's name, and you'll get a menu to either uh, synchronize, send a private message, or send a wake-up uh, call kind of thing. And of course, there's other things in the Help menu that you can take a look at. For instance, there's the Welcome in First Steps. This was written for the booklet by SVC. And you've got other things in here like uh, Module Notes, which is something I wrote. Not much of an importance, really, but it's there. And you've got other things in here like the intro uh, videos and web links. That'll take you to stuff on uh, YouTube. And of course, you've got the introductory uh, splash screen image to the module itself. So that's pretty much everything. So I uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and hope uh, you enjoy playing Starfleet Battles.